This is my cat, Millie. She has this fancy microchip activated feeder. It only opens for her. It's a neat piece of engineering, but the reason we got it is because of Mabel, who is a recovering street cat and is hard coded to eat everything she sees. Mabel has an automatic feeder that goes off on a pre-programmed schedule. Kind of like an irrigation system for your garden. We used to have one of these for Millie, but Mabel was stealing her food like a schoolyard bully steals lunchboxes, so my partner and I were forced to buy this microchip feeder and load it manually like a couple of suckers. I was almost ready to take the L and accept my role as a subservient scoop of kibble, but then I had an idea. Maybe I could use this limit switch along with a bunch of electronics and 3D printed parts to turn this pair of feeders into an all-in-one, fully automatic, chip-activated feeder deluxe. Here's the plan. The system's gonna have three parts. The auto feeder, the chip feeder, and the intermediate hopper. The biggest challenge is gonna be getting food inside the chip feeder because this door is only open while Millie's using it. It might be possible to modify the door by drilling a hole and adding a flexible tube, but this feeder was expensive and I don't really trust myself to get it right the first time. This means I'll have to be opportunistic and move the food from the auto feeder to the chip feeder when the door is already open. That's where the hopper comes in. The hopper will have a little trap door controlled by a motor. When the auto feeder goes off, it fills up the hopper and we wait for Millie to come over to investigate. Then the door will open, it will trigger this little limit switch which tells the motor it's time to open the trap door and release the food into the bowl below. The hopper turned out to be a total slam dunk. The auto feeder has this lift for connecting to its special little bowl. All I had to do was take some measurements and design a hopper that could tie into that structure. After a quick test fit, I was ready for the real thing and it came out looking great. It fit like a glove and did the thing. Look at that. Food goes right where the food is supposed to go. Perfect. My next challenge was the trap door. I considered a lot of the science here, but ultimately decided that a rack and a pinion would probably be the most reliable method to open and close the hopper. One of the reasons that I like this design is that it's low profile. If I had a door that swung open, it might bonk Millie on the head while she's trying to eat. I attached the chute to the apparatus, and it looks good. What's next? The electronics here are actually pretty straightforward. The first component is this little stepper motor, which opens and closes the hopper. And the only other component is the limit switch, which sends a signal to the Arduino, telling it when that should happen. Writing the actual code was extremely straightforward. Full disclosure, I leaned heavily on AI in this project, and my goodness guys, you would not believe how good AI is at writing Arduino code. With that out of the way, all that was left to do was attach the gear to the motor, slide in the door, and here is the result. Yeah! Oh, this is so sick. Loading the hopper. So inside there. Now Millie comes along and says, what was that? No. No. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah! <laughs> okay, so a little bit, a little bit of uh, improvement on the angle of the shoot, but that. Oh, and then, then it closes up again. You see that? Oh, it's so cool. Okay, so the, the shoot angle is a little aggressive. That, that's a really easy fix. I can swap that out in no time. With the concept proven out, it was now time to refine the design and tie up a couple of loose ends. Or solder them, actually. All right. I needed a way to reliably trigger the switch, so I designed and printed out this little housing that could be screwed onto the wooden base of my contraption. This worked surprisingly well, but reminded me that I still had one teeny tiny little problem left to solve. The food was going everywhere. The shoot angle is a little aggressive. That's a really easy, really easy fix. First things first, I needed to understand the problem. 
After a little bit of testing, I decided that the food was less likely to pop out of the bowl if it came in at a low angle. So I designed a new chute that brought the food in from the side. It looked very promising in the lab, but the real world test revealed two problems. First, the exit angle was way off. Oh, and wait. secondly, uh... the food was losing a bunch of momentum inside the chute, causing most of it to drop behind the bowl and some of it to not even leave the chute at all. Uh... I tweaked the design to make the whole chute steeper and improve the exit angle, but the same basic problems persisted no matter what I tried. At the end of the day, the problem here is variability. The average piece of kibble is making it to the right location, but the long shoot and the wide exit angle means that there's always going to be a handful that just don't. The goal, then, was to minimize variation. To do this, I repositioned the trapdoor to be as low as possible while also being directly over top of the food bowl. After installing the new design, I waited with bated breath and Finally, it works. Mm. Ah, wait, food's getting stuck. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Let's try again. Oh. too close to your head, is it? I don't think so. If she was eaten before, let's see if she goes back to it. Oh. Oh no. So I reprinted the shoot to give Millie some more headroom. Ran another test, and then this happened. Nice. Did you catch it? Notice what changes nice. the exact moment that Millie turns away. It's the motor. The motor is right above Millie's ears, and it's making this awful sound. To make sure that was it, I kept the contraption in place, but disconnected the motor. And sure enough, that went off without a hitch. So I reprinted the trapdoor to reduce the noise, put it all back together, and got ready for hopefully the final test. Yes! Finally! I have never been so happy to see this cat eat. <laughs> <laughs>